What's up, everybody? JP here. I'm here with Josh, and we have from the Swerve City podcast that he hosts along with Shane Strickland. We got Monty Easy with us tonight, man. How's it going? Man, life is good, man. Life is good, man. I can't, I can't complain. And even if I did, nobody would listen, man. I'm glad to to be on this wonderful show with you guys, man. It's been a long time coming. I've been excited to come on, man, and uh, chop shot with you guys, man. How you guys doing? Everything good? Good, man. Life is can't complain. Life is good. Oh, life could be way worse. It could be way worse. We're doing it. It's good. Life is good. I mean, people actually listen to the show, which is a bonus. Yeah. Right, I guess people That's enjoy. It. I mean, people enjoy it. That's always a good thing. Me and Josh, like we both got into this podcast game a while back, and in different shows when it originally started, and just became friends like that. How did you get into podcasting, as specifically with Shane Strickland, man? Um, okay, to give you a brief synopsis before I got with Shane, uh, I used to do my own radio show called Mortal Life Radio. It was a podcast. Um years ago, maybe about four or five years ago, I uh, did a blog talk radio for a period of time. And uh, that's how I got my chops in. Uh, went to school for, uh, still going to school to finish my associate's in communication. So I've always been into the radio broadcasting thing. That's always been my thing. Um, to answer about Shane one day, uh, I just hit him up. Uh, me and him didn't know each other very well. We knew of each other. But I hit him up and I said, hey, man, I want to um, do a sit-down interview with you just because uh, I know, you know, I'm a big fan of yours. And uh, I, I really want to interview you. So uh, we booked the interview. He came to my studio. He drove all the way from Orlando. I'm here in St. Pete. So that's about an hour and a half drive. He drove there and we sat in the studio and we did an interview. It's on YouTube right now. If you go put in Monteezy Shane Strickland, it's uh, on Title Match. It's on Title Match. It's on uh, Pivot Share, uh, Swartz, Swartz City Pivot Share. And we sat down and I uh, did the interview with him. And the thing that he liked about it, was I didn't have a script and I didn't ask him the regular questions he always gets asked. I asked him all music questions and celebrity okay. life questions. Yeah, and so after that, um, he called me later that night and he said, Hey man, I want to do this show called Swerve Talk and I want you to be the co-host with me. And it was a random idea he had and it was on the high spots network. And that was about a year and a half ago. And then Sammy Callahan directed that, so we had a lot of guests on the couch. You guys could check that on the High Spots Network for Swerve City, for Swerve Talk, excuse me. And then when Sammy moved back to Ohio from Florida, we just built our own team and started Swerve City and just kept it moving, changed the name and just kept the show moving. So you were all, you're a rapper. You do you do the hip hop, and I just sounded really white. You do the hip hop, but you um, are <laughs> so, so, but you, you're a. <laughs> you rap. You're so then, Southie. How far back do you go into? Um, well, I'm actually a huge rap fan, but how far back do you go into like wrestling? Wrestling, because obviously, like I'm assuming the rap came first with you, right? No, wrestling came first. Really? Yeah, wrestling. Uh, I um, I'm 31, so wrestling. Wrestling came before music. I started rapping when I was 16. I was watching wrestling when I was like a baby. So wrestling, yeah, wrestling definitely came before music, the music part of it. Uh, my first pay-per-view I remember watching on VHS tape, I still have the tape, was WrestleMania 8 with uh, uh, Hogan and Vicious, Sid Psycho, Sid Justice at the time, um, and uh, Macho Man and Ric Flair, one of my favorite matches, Bre uh, Bret Hart and Roddy Piper as well. So that's the first pay-per-view I remember watching. Okay. Now, what's it like to be in two industries that you've been a fan of and to, like, you call people friends that I'm sure you grew up watching in both? It is, it is a, it is a interesting feeling, man. You know, you got, you got to think about this. We're all obviously grown men here, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. And, right, absolutely. And, 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 and wrestling are two, I would say two of the most opinionated genres in the world. <laughs> yeah. So for you to last, I don't like to pat myself on the back on anything, but I say that I'm very proud that I've lasted this long because music and wrestling, if you're not, if this is not built for you, you are out of here in a minute. And you do not have to do that. So when this happened, when this happened, you know, but bring the music with the wrestling with the, with the music, 
I knew I was running into a very opinionated territory. Everybody's probably not going to like every song, but if I can get the respect of the fans and the respect of the wrestlers, I'm, I'm, I'm in a good place. And that's all I wanted. Um, so being in both of these genres has been very, very lucrative for me in a way to be able to speak to my fans that are uh, of a different genre. You know, wrestling fans, us wrestling fans are different, man. This is our, this is our, um, this is our weekly Broadway show, so we're very passionate about it. And to be able to speak to it with music is the best way that I can convey that outside of doing, this, doing a podcast. So it's, it's definitely fun juggling both realms. I mean, you've got songs about Roman Reigns and a couple of wrestlers out there. Have any of them ever, do you know if like, they've ever listened to the songs? Yes. Um, when Roman Reigns' Heart of War first came out in 2014, God, that sounds, that's an old school hit now. That's crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Classic. You know, uh, when that came out, I was, um, rest in peace to him, rest in peace to Matt and Hawaii, Rosie, my brother, love you, bro, miss you to this day. Me and him struck a friendship that was very, very tight. And um, we would talk every week. He would call me. And I talked to him maybe a week before he died. It was crazy. Like, we always used to talk. And it's, um, and I got a chance to meet him before he passed. And he told me his health wasn't that good. And, uh, but privy to, to answering the question directly, um, he told me that Roman heard it. And that, uh, he re- and that his daughter loved it. His daughter, she said they still, she still listen to it to his day. So she liked to listen to it in the car. And uh, he played it for her. He, he, uh, he definitely heard the record and played it. And I got a chance to meet his mom, his whole family. So oh, wow. definitely, definitely a blessing. So he has heard it. Uh, John Cena, I don't know. John Cena is sometimes in his own world, so I don't know. But I do know that Roman, Roman did for sure. That's awesome. That's cool. And that has to be that has to mean something to you. All right. It I does like to, because if, yeah. You go through. You take the time to write a song about somebody that you're a fan of, not like a love song that you're writing about a girl, but someone. Just, you just you wrote a song about a wrestler you were a fan of, and to to find out that they've heard it and through their family, that's awesome. It's and, a um, it's 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 a beautiful feeling, man. It's uh, it's definitely something that you can't take for granted because a lot of people write wrestling songs that really don't get anywhere. A lot of times, right. you got to be a certain kind of person to do it. There's a lot of tribute songs. There's a lot of people that's done Stone Cold hip hop songs, rock songs, and they, they don't. They don't. It doesn't yeah. touch anywhere the wind. But to be somebody that has done this, you know, and and met all the wrestlers, and I could walk into these conventions and they know me. It's it's a, it's a great feeling, man, and I'm definitely blessed to have that. Now, now you've performed at some of the conventions. Yes, uh, I've at least right now um, has been the only person to do uh, WrestleCade, WrestleCon, um, working on Starcast, working on that. I'm gonna call that. I'm working on Starcast because Starcast is the new thing. I'm definitely looking to be one of the ones to touch that stage. Yeah, um, you want to be? Did you see yeah, who they yeah. just announced? I know. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to get there. Like I'm trying to get that happening. That is, they, that is the new wave right there. Definitely. They, um, they just announced Undertaker. I mean, this yeah, is, that, we'll probably put crazy. this out at some point during the week. We're recording this on Valentine's Day and I think Undertaker was just announced today. Like that's fucking humongous. Right of my language. That's huge. That's probably the biggest thing on any wrestling scale outside of WWE ever, I would say. Yes, yes. So I heard they got Sting, Rick, and Taker like all on the same card for autograph. That's crazy. That's, that's insane. crazy. That's insane. That, we, that we, one, we, I don't we, want to be footing the bill for that. But two, that that's a once you get that bill footed, that's a license to print money. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm very, very happy for those guys over there. And uh, Starcast is a great event. All these conventions are great, man. And uh, be able to perform at these conventions and you know do a do a theme for a lot of the guys and have the loyalty of a lot of the the promotions means a lot so definitely that's definitely proud to have touched a lot of these conventions so i'm i'm definitely looking forward to the future as well now how did you get into the conventions originally i was just a fan and okay. i would just i would just go and I would, um, I had business cards. I did it the old school way. I had business cards and CDs back when, you know, even when CDs weren't even in the market five years ago, I, that was the only thing I could afford. And, you know, I'm, I'm hungry. I just want to get, I want to get a shot. So I'm just sending 
I'm giving CDs to wrestlers, top wrestlers. Like, look, man, I can make something for you. I don't want no money. I just want the opportunity, you know? And um, then eventually, uh, I ended up meeting the, the promoters of the company. And I said, look, let me send you some of my music. And if you rock with it, let me make a theme song for you guys. Nice. So I ended up making theme songs for all these promotions, all these conventions. And I've struck a friendship with them. And they've been loyal to me this whole time. And I've just, they've let me perform at their big events. And I cannot thank them enough for that opportunity. I just, I just came in with a with dress nice, had my business cards and some CDs. And said, I just want a shot. That's it. That's all. It, I mean, that's good, great advice for wrestlers that are trying to get into these conventions or onto shows. Show up. Show your value. You know, tell them what you bring to the table, and you don't know what's going to ha- happen of it. But you, you miss, you know, it's that cliche, but you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. If you take that shot, what are they? the worst they're going to say is, not right now, you know? And in your case, I mean, you've been all over these things, so they, they're not saying not right now to Montezzi. No. Absolutely, man. I've, like... I'm very, very happy and very, very blessed to have, to have angled it the right way. Um, I've been hungry, but I've been very strategic. You know, I think sometimes if you don't have the strategy and you just blow in the wind, um, now that I'm older in the game musically, I've learned to pick my spots more as opposed to just trying to be popular or relevant and stuff like that. I've learned to build relationships and learn more that I'm trying to go, I'm trying to go from like a, how can I say this? From like the biggie in wrestling music to kind of like the ditty of wrestling music, where I'm kind of like just at, like business wise, I'm just in a different. Like I can make music, and I'm I'm gonna continue to, but like okay, now he's elevating into more things. I'm starting to do commentary at wrestling now. I'm starting to do different different things, so it goes through a brand of saying, hey, this guy is also a businessman in the form of wrestling music, as opposed to just rapping. Because at some point. You know, it's like Chris Jericho said, I never want to do the same gimmick twice. If I leave that and I'm done with it, I never want to come back yeah. to it. I'm not saying I'm yeah. done with the wrestling or wrestling music, but music is just going to be an extension at this point as opposed to just the main thing. Okay. Well, the I mean, rap in itself, like underground rap, there is some money in it. There's not, you're not going to make Eminem money, but you can make money on, with YouTube, with hip hop, like, the, you know, I've talked to you a little bit, you know, online and even earlier tonight about um, battle rap, and there's those guys are making a little bit of a little bit of money. So, I mean, I just feel I feel like rap may have more money behind it, but I think wrestling. It sounds like wrestling to you has more of your passion behind it, which is more important. Yeah, wrestling is more of my more of my passion. Um. The thing about the music industry is you have to really pick your spots on how you make money. There's money to make. Even in battle rap, there's money to make. Yeah. You just have to be strategic, have the right angles, and have the right team behind you. Wrestling is more of my passion because I was a wrestling fan before I was rapping. Yeah. So even though I don't really keep up with it each and every week like I used to, um, I'm still a big fan. I'll be at WrestleMania this year and things of that nature. And I just wanted – to really, really focus on the wrestling because I one thing about me is I'm never going to leave the genre. I'm not going to be the guy that makes wrestling music and then just kind of just ventures off and never comes back. I'm always going to be here. I'm just going to be here in a different way. I might make a song that is not theme related but has wrestlers in the music video type thing. There's always okay. it's always going to be around the genre, you know. Yeah, you've got videos with like Eddie Kingston and stuff like that. So I mean, and you do the music. You did Moose's music, right? Your music's always kind of been, like you said, there may be a song or two that's not wrestling related, but wrestling always seems to tie in on you. And people absolutely, can, what's your YouTube? You have a, you have a YouTube channel, correct? Yes, I do. It is um, YouTube dot com backslash message Montezzi TV. Um, that is my YouTube, and for the podcast is YouTube dot com backslash Source City Podcast. If you go to both of those, my music is mainly on the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, Spotify as well. Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Search Montezzi. Uh, I just released an album, The Lost Tapes, uh, 24 themes that I did over the years. It's like a greatest hits type thing. And some new stuff, new material, as well as some older themes that people haven't even heard before for, on some guys in the 
to independence that's nice. on iTunes now. Tw- Twenty four songs on 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 all digital platforms. The Lost Tapes one and one point five as well. Now, do you feel like you had an advantage when you came into podcasting because you are you were already familiar with iTunes, Spotify, and all that? Good question. I feel like yes. I I've, I've always been a a sponge to just watching and understanding where the culture is going and where the game is going. And I said, okay, the a couple of advantages that I do have opposed to some other people starting a podcast or being involved in a podcast is one, I've already, I was kind of a brand name, yeah. but Swerve's getting me on the podcast brought my name to another level and brought me to meet people to a whole other level that didn't even know me. So, um, Definitely with the Apple, the Spotify, the Google Play, having the podcast and being privy to all that before it happened, including with the brand name and Swerve's cosign, has done a lot for me. So that definitely was an advantage. Yeah, that's getting someone like Strickland on board with you because independent wrestling is hot right now, and he's like, it's Shane Strickland. You know what I mean? He's all over the place. So getting someone like that to cosign on you is huge. And to be doing the show with them, I mean, it, it, you as a fan, it has to be sort of surreal. But I, I'm sure he's a fan of yours now, too. So he's he's we've developed a very, very um, unique friendship. And I've never I never, you know, you got to think about this, right? We're all in the entertainment business. It's very rare to find people in this business that has like a good heart and really cares, yeah. you know? And it's very, you could probably count on three fingers how many people you really, really find that is like, yo, that's my brother. I would jump in front of a bullet for that man if it had to, if I had to. Like, you rarely find those people. And he's one of them. And, um, awesome. you know, he, I, it's, it's like me and him are, he's one of the few people where we, we, we think a lot alike. We're very, we're very tactical thinkers. So uh, we can almost finish each other's sentences and we've known each other like two or three years. And it's very, very, organic when you find that if you watch our podcast our conversations are conversations we have literally every day texting each other or on the phone we'll call each other and we'll just talk like build build like just build and have conversation and then we'll be like oh this is podcast and then we'll stop talking about it just save it for the podcast so it's more of a natural organic conversation and it's not like something we're just redoing so um he's his co-sign has been amazing for me and just the friendship that we've built has, I can't explain enough how close we've gotten over this time. I can't thank him enough. That's my brother. What's next for me is, you know, I believe, like I said earlier, I mentioned earlier, I believe in kind of like the Chris Jericho mindset. I believe you give people, I believe Chris Jericho and Dwayne Johnson are the two best multi-talented entertainers in the wrestling business I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, as far as being able to do everything, even if they're not the greatest at everything, they're great at what they do. Like they're in the conversation for being great, multi-talented people as in Jericho being a musician and doing the podcast and being a wrestler and being a businessman with his crews, like, and, yes. and, and putting all of that together. I, 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 I go off to that model because I want to do, I wanted to, first it was the music. And then once I got to a certain point where I was like, okay, musically, my music is played everywhere besides WWE. That's the only place it hasn't played. Mm-hmm. So now I'm like, okay, now that that's done, I don't want to stick at one thing and then just kind of lose the hunger. And then it's kind of like, oh, you know, he's not, you can hear it in his music. It's not there anymore. He's kind of just doing it. Nah, I want to get into the podcast world, which I started to do. Now I'm going to do commentary. I uh, debut um, March 10th at NGW in Tennessee. Uh, don't call to come back to. We got Ultimo Dragon on the card. I mean, I get to call it a match with Ultimo Dragon, Tajiri, Matt Cross, Shane Strickland, Richard Swan. I get to do commentary the whole show. Like, and they've given me this opportunity to just have fun. I, I you know, that, that's, that I could sink my teeth into that because that's something I haven't done. So that becomes something new for me. That becomes a challenge. Like, I haven't, I, I, I could do the music in, with the back of my hand, but. I'm now focusing on other ventures and continuing to put out music. Me and Shane have a song coming out called uh, Skyline uh, next month. Look out for that video. It's coming out. And um, 
Maybe you hear Shane drop a few bars. You, maybe. Okay. I'm trying to push him to. I'm trying to push him to because okay. that's what everybody wants in the rap. So I uh, trust me. I'm with y'all fans. Trust me. I'm with you. And, okay. uh, you know, so, you know, the music, commentary, podcasting, and I also, me and Ariel, me and Ariel Monroe, Cedric Alexander's wife, Big Swole, um, we just booked our first motivational speaking date. So we're going to be speaking at schools, me and her. That is awesome. Now, as far as, like, the doing the commentary, are you, like, studying tapes? Are you preparing for that? I, I would be nervous as hell if it was me. You know, I'm, how can I say this? It's, it's, it's very, I've got, and it's, everybody's preparation is different. I'm, um, I'm what you call like a warm-up, last-minute game guy. You know how we talk battle rap and some guys can get their round done yeah. like the day before the show? And some guys have to prepare months before they get into the ring and battle rap. I'm more of the in-between. I've watched it for years. I've studied. They, they gave me tape on how they want me to be. So now I'm just kind of watching. I'm not stressing out over it because I tend, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a strategist, and strategists tend to overthink. And if you overthink, you start stressing out. So I started, to, I just calmly watched some shows. I watched some, some of their, their previous commentary, and I just watch. I watch regular things. Sometimes I'll turn the TV down and just kind of talk while the match is going on okay. and try, try different things, try different things that are going to fit, <laughs> things that won't fit. Me and my friend are kind of going over some things. He's like, nah, that's kind of corny. Don't say that. Oh, that's cool. We just say that. That's kind of new and what's going on in the world. And, um, you know, that's that's a new challenge for me. So, yeah, man, I'm studying the game case. I'm just – I'm kind of last-minute gang, though, because I don't like to stress out and overthink. Right, right. Oh, no, and that's the – you definitely don't want to – and you don't want to come off scripted the way it could if you think it out too much ahead of time. You want it to be natural, and that's, uh, like, that would be my battle if I was going to try doing that, would be to be nervous about it going in, but to also not be so over-prepared that it seems like I'm reading off a teleprompter. <laughs> that's a fact, man. You that's know? a fact. It, it, it's new territory, man. And, you know, I, I can't tell you how many votes of confidence I've gotten from a lot of the wrestlers, like WWE people just like, yo, you can, you got this. Like, this is, this is something new for you. This is, this is good for you. This is new. This is, you know, eventually you're going to get to a point where you've been in wrestling music five years. Now it's time to extend your brand and show people you can do different things. Cool. Now that now that JP has got his um, thirty minutes of questioning in, since he wanted to said we got actually uh, questions from fans, uh, JP had to get his thirty minutes of questioning in. Uh, <laughs> 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 let's uh, let's take a quick break, real quick. Uh, pay some of your bills, pay some of my bills, try to pay some of uh, Tizzy's bills here. And then uh, we'll be right back, and maybe, maybe, will you let us ask these questions, JP? Yeah, I've been waiting for you to jump in. I can't. You just keep running your mouth. You guys are going really good. You're doing a good job talking to each other. It's awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, All right, man. Let's take this break. We'll be right back. Guys, make sure you get the best wrestling merch in the game. Check out www.smart-mark.co.uk. That's where you can get your Irish Whip shirts. Join the Mafia. And you can get other shirts from guys like Sugar Dunkington, and they have their own line of shirts. They have the best wrestling shirts out there right now. The stuff is discreet. It doesn't shout out, hey, I'm a wrestling mark or anything like that. It's just very cool stuff. So check them out again. It's www.smart-mark.co.uk. Uh, prices are reasonable. Shipping is very reasonable. Uh, and it's very quick. So check them out, please. Thank you, guys. Hey, what's up, TDW Mafia? It's the Eddie. Uh, we're back here with Montezzi. And, of course, JP is still here. Thanks what's for sticking up? around. Yeah. He went to, he, his throat was dry. Get some water. He's good. We know he can carry a show his whole time. It's awesome. Good job, man. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. You're but welcome. I can't read, though. And you you got to read the fan questions. Okay. Fan questions, folks. And these... These are some pretty good ones, man. I th- you might have addressed th- this is one of the big ones I was going to ask, but I think we kind of touched on it as people listen to the interview. Um, first one's from Pete or at Petopolis, one of our boys, Petey. Um, whether it's being a musician, a voice talent, or anything artistic, 
what would you recommend people do to get in the business? Good question. See, a lot of people will say, you know, record music, do this, do that. Here's my thing. And I will just be honest with you guys. Please, 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 please know what lane you want to attack as an artist. Know what your strengths are. If your lane is to be an LL Cool J and to talk about women, stick to that. If your lane is, you know, being more of a 50 Cent, more of an aggressive guy, or Jay-Z, more of a braggadocious rapper, or a Tupac, more of a deep rapper, or if you are uh, more of a Dave Matthews, or if you're a, a Slash, or if you're a John Mayer, whatever your strengths are, know that. And the second thing I will give you, please, is to understand the music business. Understand how to market yourself. You have Instagram, you have Facebook, you have Twitter. You can easily have a direct relationship with all your fans. Don't be Hollywood with people. When you're independent and you're on your way up, you need to have as many backing and with people as possible because these people are going to put you on. The fans put you on. You don't put yourself on. So appreciate them. If they cop your single, thank you. Do a little video shout out thanking each and every fan. Whatever time you have, have a direct correlation with your fans. You don't need a record label nowadays. Just have a one-on-one -on -one with your fans, and, and I guarantee you, I've seen people have 100,000 followers, and it can only bring 30 people to a show. I've seen someone, literally, with 60 Twitter followers, but brought uh, 103 people on his own muscle, and literally has no social media much at all. It's possible, y'all. Just keep working. Cool. So th this one's this is the second one from, from Pete. Um, when you're looking for inspiration to write the songs, um, like who are some of your go-to artists to get your vibe going? Very good question. Uh, Nas, I would say Nas. Um, cool. Nas is definitely one I go to. Uh, uh, previous old before you went crazy, Kanye. I would say him, the old <laughs> Kanye. Backpack, backpack through the wire, 2003 Kanye. Not, not this one. Um, <laughs> I would say, and uh, I would say Tupac as well. When I'm on a deeper level, when I really want to like just kind of vibe out, riding in the car, got a lot of stuff on my mind, I would say uh, Tupac as well. Definitely would be those guys that gets me in the zone. Cool. Are you are you one of those guys? Are you a? You think Pac is the greatest? Is it Pac? No, I do Biggie? not. I do not think Pac's the greatest. Who's the greatest? To no. You? I think my okay. I said this is gonna is not a cop out answer, but I'm just saying overall, he's not my favorite. But overall catalog and longevity, Jay Z. But in my favorite, my favorite is Nas. Nas is my goal as far as who I love the best is Nas. See, I wasn't a huge Nas fan. Ether is by far my favorite diss track of all time, though. Mine too. By <laughs> far, he Eminem couldn't touch Ether. And M's yeah. one of the best out there as far as like the diss and the the rap scene, but Ether just was like and back when that was, that was crazy. Yeah, I remember when that first song first came out, dude. It it, it hurt that it hurt Jay Z soul. It took him years to recover from that. It took him years to recover. It's still a sore spot with him to this day, I guarantee it. How about Yo. how about beefing? I mean, are you I mean you're you're becoming pretty successful at what you're doing right now and it's all relatable to what you've said for the last half hour is hard work, dedication, perseverance, you're hustling, you're getting your cards out there, you're talking to the people you need to talk to, you're putting your face out there in front of some people. Is there anybody that are you stirring the pot a little bit? Is anybody that's 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 what? Uh, are you, you got, I, I, is there any is rap it, beef with Montesi out there? No, um, I feel like for one, they they definitely they definitely shouldn't want to do that and all do humbleness. They definitely I wouldn't do that. But because I you know in rap beef, man, there's no rules, man. You got You go for the juggler in rap beef, and if I did that, a lot of wrestling fans would probably look at me different because I would definitely host show no mercy. <laughs> so um, that, that's just turn, the, comp huh? the competition of it. But honestly, no, I come in all peace and I'm I'm competitive. I feel like I'm one of the best. Um, when, especially when it comes to this lane, I feel like I'm one of them. There's a lot of guys doing it, and I commend all of them that do it. Uh, anyone that does the wrestling lane music, whether they just came or in the past or whatever, 
every one of them I commend it because it definitely takes a lot of passion to do this. And you have to recreate yourself with every song that you make in one specific lane to not sound the same. So uh, that is it. But as far as beats, no, I love competition and it would be fun. I used to rap battle on stuff back in the days, but um, I'm, 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 you know, for the competition's sake, yes. But if it comes to beef, I'm, I'm trying to take somebody's head off. Now, how do you feel about rap battle nowadays? The king of the dark. The formulated URL. battle rap. The yeah, for, yeah. The formulated battle rap's amazing. I love URL. I watch battles every night. I mean, it's it's my it's my it's my pastime. Just to, to see the stuff that those guys are better rappers than me because those guys thinking of some of the most creative things. Yeah. I've, I'm like, how did that compute inside your head? Like, I don't, I sit here sometimes and I'm like, I'm struggling to find a bar. And then this, these people just say these most, I mean, they're not the greatest song makers, right. but when That's... it comes to, when, but when it comes to the form of like three minutes, 60 bars, a hundred bars, say this and say the most creative thing, attacking your opponent. I would never say anything bad about it. I love it. It's it's just an amazing sense of competition. I miss the old days though, when guys were friends and they really didn't like each other because it made better battles. That's well, you, and I think you hit the nail on the head. Is like even Murder Mook, who one of the best rip battlers of all time, if not the best battle rapper of all time, in my opinion, couldn't write a song for the life of him. But you couldn't nah. touch him in a battle. Nah, it's... formulating a song is different from yeah writing writing. I mean, I took. I took a little behind the scenes about me. I took two years off music for a time. Let me tell you something. I From 2011 to when Roman Reigns dropped, I didn't write one bar for three years because I just, the uh, reason why I didn't was because I wanted to reprogram my mind. When you're used to doing the battle rap and the, the aggressive music, all your music ends up sounding like that. And you can't get the women talking about shooting somebody. Even I've never <laughs> done that, but still. You, know, you never, you know, you can't get, no, no bras don't want to hear that. So I had to, changed my whole process and it took years of me literally listening to a different kind of music to learn how to write hit records so i started the that's when i started the, making the whole process of uh creatively writing wrestling records and making them hits which is you know a different thing in itself but uh i think i've done okay so far yeah so and, and the reason i kind of brought brought that up uh especially the competition wise and, and having the beef is when when we talk about pro wrestling right now in this in the status and where it's at with AEW, uh, where it's at WWE, where it's at um, Dean Ambrose getting ready to leave Undertaker, Starcast. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, uh, and, in, and nobody really knows who's going to end up where and what's going on. I mean, how exciting is that for somebody like you that's an entrepreneur already has their name out there, and when somebody knows they need something, they get a hold of you. I believe that, you know, that shows, you know, a lot of trust and reputation. I've learned a lot about the wrestling business, being around a lot of the wrestlers and how they think, being around the fans that are, that being around you guys who are in the business but are still fans, and then people who are just fans and not in the business at all. And just seeing the dichotomy of the, the thought processes and how people think. I've had this privileged position than to gather so much and soak up, absorb, absorb so much knowledge from any diameter of how the business works. And I believe competition as far as it comes to AEW, Impact, MLW, ROH, New Japan, I think that is great. I believe WWE is not the be-all end-all for everyone anymore. No. Now, financially, it might be for people. If you want to get paid the most and probably work the least the way they sign people and make money, and be happy with a comfortable living, then yeah, the E might be the spot. But if you are an independent person like myself, who is just out here branching, a mercenary, a mercenary, a man of his own time and his own accord, a mercenary of his time, you can make a lot of money out here. And I see a lot of my friends sign up with RH, sign up with AEW, my friend Nyla Rose, um, MJS, they sign in with these companies and they're not just trying to go to the to the top company anymore. And that just shows you that there's more opportunity for people out there. And competition can be a good thing if done right. Don't mean we have to take shots at each other. Don't mean we have to like each other. But it means that we can do what we have to do to make sure that there's plates on everybody's table because everybody has to eat. 
Yeah, the, the the more competition, the better. And really, it, I I think that's what when everybody has continued to complain and whine and bitch and moan, even over the last several two or three years, of it's stale, it's stagnant, it's this or it's that. It it, it really wasn't. It was just there was there was hungry individuals that were in places they weren't allowed. There was a ceiling, and they were put on it. And I think that's the coolest thing for me with AEW and I think why I've always backed impact as much as I always have is that yeah. it's always an entrepreneurial spirit where I, that's number one. I want to beat number one. I want to kick number one's ass. And I guess the way I put it, and it's, just, this is Anthony green's way uh, elevator speech is <clears throat> AEW is going to be full of hungry, young, and maybe not young, hungry, just hungry, want to work, I want to work as much as I can. I want to show you everything I got 100% all the time, every day. The other part of that is if you're on the E, just like you said, if you don't want that schedule, if you don't want to be or work as hard, I think that's what's translating. That's where the ratings are down. That's why everything is down. It's just the product and the work rate. I don't mean to, I'm not, I'm not, but I'm not trying to put it down. The work rate in NXT is a million times better than the work rate I see or would see on Monday or, or Tuesday night. Is that me, a false? Uh, is that a false statement? No, let me uh, let me let me comment. This is this is what I'm gonna say is gonna circumvent right around to your point. I'm just gonna bring it in myself and my my ideology coming into wrestling music and why it like correlates to what WWE and everything is now. The best thing I think I did, and I will always tell somebody this because I talked to a lot of artists people who I've inspired to try to do this or people who want to do football themes or any NHL themes or whatever. The thing I'm glad that I did, I, that I'm dead. And I really want to stress this out is that I didn't just go to the WWE route. I did at first. Now with Roman Reigns and John Cena for the first two years of me doing wrestling music, I tried to go for the big name. Then when I switched to the independence, it was the best thing I could have done. Because it gave me a newfound respect. And, and the wrestler said, okay, you want it? You have to come in the trenches with us. And you want to perform at these places? You pay your own flights. You come out here and you grab the mic time and you rock on, on, the, on the shows. And you, you know, and you do your thing and you spit your bars for however long. And if the people rock with you, they do. If they don't care, they don't. But you're out there and they're see, they got a chance to see you and they got the chance to see your elevation. And me doing the independent music thing was the better route for me because I was able to build more relationships as opposed to just going the outside route, trying to hit to the clouds. And they're a publicly traded company. And if they're not making them tons of money, if there's nothing they can market with you or you're not a big name, you're just going to be throwing things in the wind. You might get a couple of retweets and likes, but that's it. No shade, but that's just, that's just how I've, I'm glad I did it that way. The reason why I break that point is because um, – it's the same thing. Like when you get to the higher points, people might not be as hungry, but you got a lot of wrestlers who are hungry and they're willing to leave to go to places that they might not get paid as much just to have the opportunity to say, look, it's not about the money for me. For some people, it's about the money. If you have a family, if you got kids, then your motivation might be different at a certain point. Like, look, you know, I got to feed my kids and I want to get a check and I'm going to do what I got to do here while I'm here. But if you in a Dean Ambrose situation where you just got a wife and you just want to wrestle and you want to do different things or Sammy Callahan or, you know, my opinion, the greatest independent wrestler of all time, uh, him and Eddie Kingston are my two guys. You got, you know, people like that who will literally say, look, you know, I don't want to go to the quotation machine. I want to build it. I want to be in these trenches, make a comfortable living and show that, Hey, I can do something for myself without having to go to the establishment and feel lazy because there's 700 other people fighting for the same spot with one man making the decision. You got one person making the decision. This is not like a council. This is not like Congress with the president where everybody can like kind of agree or disagree with the moves he's making. Nah, there's one person making the decisions. And if that man, Mr. Kennedy, the man don't like it, it ain't happening. And good luck with that. You know, what's so cool about those three names that you mentioned is that they are all CZW guys. God, that just makes Love me... CZW. <laughs> that just that just makes me I just it's a, it's awesome, man. That it just it's one of those things 
where I don't they don't get enough credit, and that's just because of the violent stuff. But there's a lot of the best of the best tournaments and things like that. But speaking of CZW, uh, Swerve City, Defy, how much fun is it for you out here in the West with Defy? That is still to this day the best place I ever go to travel in my life. It is um, Defy, Seattle. Shout out to Jim Perry, the promoter, for believing in me and giving me that platform. I've been out there three times, and it is, I swear to God, I never want to come home. I never want to come back to Florida. I love, I love the West Coast. I love the West Coast. If um, I didn't have, you know, if I didn't have children, and I was just a single man by myself, I definitely would be a spot I would go. Um, <laughs> it is the West Coast, man. Seattle, the West Coast is just amazing. The air, the chill vibes, the people. They've, I've never been to a place that appreciates me as much as that place does. They love me out there. And I love Seattle. I love the West Coast. Excuse me. PCW Ultra in California. They love me out there. I love yep. them. It is amazing man amazing but even i mean have you you've been a bar wrestling too right you just were at bar no i no, actually okay. just interviewed joey ryan we just interviewed okay. joey ryan but i've okay. never been to a bar show um i gotta hit up joey and um i will probably um i want i might if he's having something wrestle uh, wrestle mania weekend i'll go but I really want to just go to one of the ones in like the club area when they're in like the West Coast and really watch one of those matches. Definitely. Will, will you let Joey Ryan flip you? Me? Yeah. yeah a dick flip. Uh, how much? How much money are we talking? <laughs> 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 how much money are we talking? Because um, all uh, no disrespect, man. I'm just not you know grab another man's junk without the without the paper, man. As, you know, I'm not no. doing it, man. You I got two. <laughs> the money in the independent more. wrestling, and th- like the WWE being the place for the money. But I think like, and I say this all the time, as far as what they do in the ring, I'm not a huge fan of the Young Bucks. I, I would be. I still, if they did yeah, I'm gonna JP. You know how I feel about the Young Bucks, and you know it. And I'm I. Well, you know they it. put in so much hustle, and you have to respect that. They oh. make WWE money without the WWE. That, and that's just it. It's like it's what Teezy's saying. It's hustle. It's hustle. It's yeah. you take charge. Don't rely on somebody else. They don't want the easy way. And I'm these. I, I, it just. I can't. You and I. I'm, I'm 43 years old. Uh, so we got t- what, 12 years on on you. Um, so I got I got two more questions I got to ask you. They're fan questions. Is this from a different podcast? Actually, it's one that's specifically I think. Um, impact related because it's six sided podcast. So the the first one I got for you, TZ, is in no particular order. What are your top three entrance themes of all time? Mm. I to this day, it, I, okay. Themes, not entrances. So music wise, I think Stone Cold Steve Austin theme is the best theme I've ever heard in my life. I, I love that glass shattering rage against the machine sound of music it's right. something about that when that glass shatters and that music drops it just i don't know it just it does something <laughs> um okay goldberg nice um yeah that's a dark that's good. it's a dark horse and Okay, what, what I think is the best, okay, the best and favorites are two different. You have favorites, and that's the best, but my, my third, I'm a big fan of, um, what's that music? The one, uh, The Undertaker one, uh, the, 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 what was the one, the, was it was the corporate ministry where he wore the, the black with the cross and he had the long beard and he used to come out with Paul Bear with the trench coat, the coat. He was like, Tucker Taker, that yeah. corporate ministry music. Yeah, oh my yeah. god, I love that! And a and a and a mention and a slight mention, honorable mention, Brock Lesnar. That music is fire too. Yeah, Brock. So that's kind of leads up. Do you, um, our, their second question is: Are you of the opinion that an entrance theme can make or break a career? Yes, I believe. There's people that can rap, sing, play guitar, 
sing their behinds off, and they don't know how to make a a pristine wrestling song. My mistake when I first got into making wrestling music years ago was trying to make actual formulated hip hop songs. So it would have like two full verses. It sounded like an actual song, and I'm over there overwriting, and I'm not getting the I'm getting the response, but I'm not really getting it that I want. Like once I learned how to form write the formula of a theme song and notice that it's more about getting the people involved as opposed to me trying to over rap or overdo it. That's when my music got more successful. So. I believe that a theme song can make or break a career. It has to fit the person. It has to. One thing about Jim Johnston, Jim Johnston struck gold maybe about 95% of the time. Once in a blue moon, you hear some themes that it didn't work with the person. Right. But 95, now he has like a 96, 97% shooting range rate. Whereas like this dude, if he, I, he hooked you up with something, it fits you completely. It's like T.J. Perkins and his. I don't. It just it's, to me, he'll always be suicide to me. It's like I hear that music and I just go, "Oh my god, that's not T.J. That's stop it." <laughs> can, can I ask you guys something real quick? Because I yeah. want to ask you guys. You guys are 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 not musicians, but you guys are fans. Okay. This is what is missing in themes today. They don't sound the same. <laughs> You know, back in, like, I'm an 80s guy for as far as wrestling goes. Like, you had some Themes. real songs, but, like, you had lyrics to all the songs. So, like, you could sing along with Hogan coming out. Right. And that got you, to me, that got you a little more into it. You know, you're, Hogan's coming out, and you're singing, I am a real American. And everybody right. in the world stopped what they were doing to sing that. No shit. It's true. Especially you know, Rocky. Rocky movie. Remember that? Yeah. Yep. And, and Classic theme. Classic theme. Yeah. That's... And, and, and yeah, that I think, and, and JP hits it on the head, that that plus Pyro, <laughs> but that's not on the song. Uh, <laughs> and Stone Cold. Stone, Stone Cold. Stone Cold, he had the glass breaking right beforehand, and you knew what was coming immediately after that. I just, I, just, I, just like remember, I just remember being a kid, right, and just watching TV, and then all of a sudden you're here. If you smell, it just, like, it just, it does, yeah. you feel yeah. the chills in your body when you hear that. Like, it, it's crazy. That first note, that, that first, the first two seconds of the song, and you knew what was happening. Yeah, and that's, I think that's the breakdown that you always, I think that's always what pro wrestling breaks down to. Just like Wheeler said, or Anthony Green, is just it's got to be, it's an elevator, elevator speech all the time. It's always got to be to the point as quick as you possibly can, make it uh, relevant as as relevant as you can. Um, but man, to hit all all those at the same time and get that piece right, you like you say, is hard. It. Yeah, yeah, it's that's hard, man. What you do is not easy. Moose's entrance is nuts. It's it's spot on. That's one of the ones that just, it just, it's everything. It's the chant. It's like, like JP's talking about. That's what you get. You get the moose chant. It easy, easy to the point. And I mean, it's like, it's, um, that's all you need. You need a, you need a dope beat that if you're going to do that kind of route that people can nod their head to and participate, that's all you need, you know? Right. And, and, and that's all people want. Like AJ Styles theme is one of the few what is really like hip hop, country hip hop, Christian right. country hip hop. But it's like they don't want no, that's all you have to say. That's it. Yeah. Simple. Don't have to be a whole crazy, you know, eighteen lyric thing. They don't want none. Nope. They don't want none. Nope. That's all you gotta say. <laughs> you have the right beat and that's how you formulate it. It's that easy. But it's just finding the right music and the right person to come out with the music. Because sometimes you can have something catchy, but it just doesn't fit that particular wrestler. They don't know how to put the song over. And sometimes you have a guy who's over, but his theme song is not good. So you just have to, you have to find that balance. Now, who's your go-to for beats? Do you do your own beats or do you have somebody you use? See, I, a wise man once told me, man, don't try to do everything. <laughs> you right, know, right, right. 
you know, do, do have if somebody's better at you or something, then you know, don't don't you know do yeah. business with them because you'll you'll end up you'll end up degrading your sound sometimes trying to do too much. I have a team of producers of like okay. three four producers that I go to. Um, we hit we we work together. A lot of times, I'm more the visionary. I know how I wanted to hear, and they can just put it over the beats. So. I'll just tell them this idea. Sometimes I'll do like voice samples over the phone and they'll make like an exact beat. Um, the challenging thing though, and this is what people kind of don't get, the hard part about doing it is literally writing a theme for another grown man or woman and trying to bring out them and their character in something that you're writing for them. You're thinking as another person, you know? And the beats be the hardest part because they have a certain taste that they like. So, um, a certain, another guy just made a song for, uh, uh, Barrington, Barrington Hughes, he wrestles for MLW, super heavyweight. He yeah, wanted a, uh, he wanted a, he, I just made his theme, uh, last night and he just wanted something smooth, laid back, luxury, luxury music. Maybe he was riding in a limo and maybe like a, Boney James, the jazz player, was on. He wanted something like that with lyrics. So I had to get up my team and kind of just kind of mess with it, and it happened. So, yeah, man, I have a team of producers. And shout out to those guys. Shout out to Timeless. Shout out to Trendsetters. All those guys I've worked with because they really, really helped me get that out. Okay. Because so people... they... Go ahead, you Jay. probably agree that the, the beat... <laughs> It's not as important as the lyrics to me, but I know it is to a lot of people. And that's like you got to have, like you said, that tight knit group, tight knit group of people that you trust doing the beats. Yeah, I see. I was, I had that same mindset as you, as a, as a, as a person who loves lyrics. I still am that down to the core. I'm more bars over everything type guy. But when you're writing a song, you kind of right. got to think outside of yourself and let the beat speak to you. And a lot of people, like even when we said about the battle rappers thing, a lot of people can't make good music sometimes because they don't let the music speak to them. They try to force what they want to say on the music when you have to listen to the beat and just kind of listen to the, what the beat is telling you in a weird kind of way. But that's how you have to do it. That's... Who's your, who's your go-to? Like if you want to know if something's good or not, like if, if you, you want to know like Shane, yeah, Shane, Shane. Shane yeah, took my he, music apart, dude. He picked will he, me apart, will he straight bro. up say? Will he straight up say like, "Nah, it's a shit. Get rid of this." He'll tell me it's trash, dead ass. <laughs> He'll tell me it's trash, That's... and I love it. And I love right. it. He'll if it, if it, if it's if it's not suitable, he'll say. Then you say, "Oh, that you you was using your bag on that one, bro. That was good." If he doesn't like you, he'll be like, "Eh." I know his responses. He'll just be like, "All right." You know what's funny about and, that is because it, it it works the same way in because there's there's kids that, that JP and I know that are getting information and advice from guys that are up in the big leagues on what to do sometimes and how to do it and ideas. So it's just it's one of those things, and they're, and they're going to be honest and they're going to say, "No, kid, don't do that. That's dumb." Right. You go to the one that's gonna you want that be honest. One because you want that one. You don't want yeah, the person want that's going to kiss you your ass every time. That person. You have to have that person because it's only going to make you better. And as long as you don't take it personal, because he's asking me opinion on matches, and I've told him like I feel like he was going through emotions, you know. And it, it didn't, it, you know, it was good, but it just wasn't the Shane match. Right? I know when you're in there with a certain person that you really want to wrestle, it's a different match. It's a di- you have different emotions on your face as opposed to just kind of going through the emotions, just kind of getting through the match because you might not have chemistry with that person, or it might not, you might not be your night. Um, we've been honest with each other with everything. That's why I like musically. Um, the thing that, that we've helped each other is I've helped him you know that his music opinion and his opinion counts and his personality counts. And he's helped me with my confidence in saying, look, man, you can do more than just make wrestling songs. There's more you can do. So he pushed me through Sir Swerve City. That's why I said it's featuring Shane Strickland because if it wasn't for him, that song wouldn't have came out the way it did. He pushed me like, I, I let him hear previous stuff on road trips. He's like, nah, that's not good enough, bro. I don't, I don't know. And I literally had to get pissed off. I had to get mad at him for a minute and say, I really do this. But that's how it, that's how it pushed me. It, it helped me. So I definitely thank him for that. 
Awesome. Hey, we're getting up. We're, we're reaching that hour. Is there uh, if anybody wants to reach out to you and if somebody is really actually 100 percent interested in uh, using your services for their interest theme, their music or anything like that, how do they get a hold of you? How do they reach out to you? Do they have to do they reach out directly to you or do they need to go to somebody specifically to help filter that stuff out? Nah, man. Um, I'm a man of the people. Um, I like to build a relationship with all my fans, with all the wrestlers. There's nobody you have to speak to to get to me. Just email me, man, at MontezyTV at Gmail. My Facebook, facebook.com backslash Montezy. You guys can message me on Facebook. I'll answer back directly. You know, we can do business, fair business. If it's about the opportunity, hey, you know, I'm not here trying to kill people's pockets. I'm just here to be a man of the people. You can hit me up, uh, youtube.com backslash message my TV, TV Swerve City Podcast dot, uh, pivotshare.com. Uh, new episodes, podcasts dropping every week. So, uh, streaming, audio, you guys can check out the podcast, hit me up. Um, also, my new album I'm working on now called Erica's Son. That is my personal album. A lot of people in here like music outside of wrestling or wrestling related stuff about my life. So um, you guys are finally getting that next year. I'm dropping Erica's son. Uh, wrestlers will be in the music video. They'll just be playing different parts. So it will be my music, but wrestlers are still going to be in it and involved in every video. So um, just with normal music. So you guys check that out as well. Um, for Erica's son, Google Play, Spotify, iTunes, everything on TV. And um, once again, you guys, thank you for everything and all the support as well. You know, thank you guys for bringing me on and I look forward to coming back whenever you guys want. Me. No, it's always our pleasure, man. The biggest thing is, is that it's a, uh, it's a platform um, because we've, it's amazing when we do stuff like this, even, even just last week when we had Robbie come on here um, and he's thinking about getting back in the business, JP said, yeah, there's already been people contacting him about having gym availability and yeah. this and that. So it's just our, our job. Um, not really our job, but what we do is we pay it forward, man. We've been doing this forever. And, you know, the coolest thing is, is if you're the guy that's the go-to guy when people need something and you've got a team that you sound like you already have a a support team that can get this kind of stuff done. We just want to help get your name out there and get you as much music out there as we can, man. Blessings, man. I definitely appreciate you guys, man. And um, one quick thing, I know where, I know where, I'll press on top, but I just got to ask you one question, Jay. Uh, who you got in that uh, hollow and math battle? Real quick, who you got? Hollow. Easy, 3-0. Hollow all day. <laughs> yeah, I don't, know if it'll be a, I don't know if it's a 30 or not, but it's definitely hollow. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Math will get around, I, probably. Yeah, that, that could be a classic, but it's hollow all day long. Absolutely. <laughs> Josh is like, what are they talking about? No, nah, I love it, man. I I love it. I'm just I'm just a white boy from Montana. <laughs> Listen, I called it the rap earlier, so. But yeah, that's um. You you think hollow? You think it's a body, huh? Yeah, I think uh, math will probably get around because probably the personal stuff he'll have over him probably get yeah, one around. But that's but that's I, one yeah. I have to watch. Yeah, that I'm after. I'm gonna have to sit back and literally like order it and like support it yeah. and watch that. So that's Saturday. I'm gonna have to watch it, and I'll be hitting you up on the DM, man, and let me know what you think. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> if I'm gonna be. I don't know if I'm ordering. I may. I might actually order it for that battle. His. I'm up yeah. in Massachusetts, and we get we get King of the Dot once a year. They come down with Massacre, and I've never been to one. I almost went to one and I didn't go, and it was the Diz vs. Hollow one. I I was like halfway out my door to go, and I talked myself out of it. And then they had Hollow vs. Diz in that one battle promo, the one round promo, and kicking myself after that. Classic, classic man. Yeah. Classic. Classic. Can't wait cool, for uh, uh, for that as well. Definitely, man. Thank you, bro. Thank you for. Thank you guys for once again having me on, man. Um, it's a blessing. I appreciate it. And, and whatever you guys want me to do anything, man, I'm here. I'm, I'm in the crib, always working. So I'm always available to you guys if you need me. Appreciate it, brother. Same, same here. You need graphics, stuff like that. I'm half assed at it, but we'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, bro. Thank you guys, man. Much love you to you guys. Podcast. Keep pushing, man. Thank you. All right, man. Thanks. Have a good night. You too, man. Thank you.